Welcome to your Research Business Daily Report, sponsored today and this week by 4i, the leader in insights and analytics transformation. Forrester researchers Roxana Stromanger spoke out after attending the ARF annual conference and hearing a number of presentations. In her blog, she offered these constructive comments, quote, I was surprised we were still talking about how we need to tell a story with our data, the role of data visualization in presenting our data, why we need to embrace change, and how to get a seat at the executive table. She continued, quote, we need to focus our attention on solutions, best practices, and what is on the horizon. I want a conference, she said, to blow my mind about the possibilities of what our industry can and should be like. And she said, I want to hear new ways of using data. It would have been great to have a talk on new data sources such as 3D sensors and even Google Glasses, end of quote. Roxana is right, and it's not limited to what is said and presented at conferences. Her bringing up the impact of Google Glasses got me to think about it. It is Google's new wearable computer with a head-mounted display. It won't be consumer available until sometime in 2014 at the earliest, and its mission is said to be producing a mass-market, ubiquitous computer. Then I found this research-related thought about Google Glasses from Daniel Shapiro. He said, and I quote, its potential future applications, not existing ones, interest me the most. Research suggests pupils dilate when people are excited or aroused by what they see. So, what if a second camera faced inwards and analyzed your pupils? That would open the world to some incredibly interesting and broad applications. She, he continued, what if Google Glasses calculated a happiness score based on what people see and saved the date, object of interest, time, and location of that score? And he finished that the happiness graph could be one of the most powerful data sets ever created, end of quote. Finally, we have more with the three winners of the GFK Next Generation competition. Reminding you, they're from Aurora University in Illinois. Today, Kokobi, Camila, and Robeska clue us in on how to introduce and attract university students to the subject of market research. Listen and learn, as I did. <laughs> okay, so let me ask the three of you because I think one of the big issues in the uh, research industry is incorporating and getting, you know, good, young, intelligent, new talent like the three of you potentially into our industry. What do you think from the experience you've had at the, your university level could be done to get more of your fellow students interested and involved in research? I'll let you go first. Well, I really think that it's it's about it's not just about what the school has to offer. It's about what the students are willing to do to make a difference in their career and to make a difference in their own personal lives. I mean, I know that the three of us volunteered our time to do this research and it took us over six months mm -hmm. to conduct everything and to put our, re our, our report together. So I think that it's not only what the school has to offer, it's about the students knowing that putting their time out there and for something that's going to better their career, better their knowledge about the industry, um, just give them an over, make them more well-rounded um, about what they're going to do after they graduate. I think that that's really what makes the difference because, I mean, I'm, I've had four internships now and they've all been in different fields and I think that that's really what's made me want to put my time out and know that that's what make, makes the difference. When I show up at my internships, the fact that I know SPSS, the fact that I have experience with social media, SEO, um, collecting surveys, conducting focus groups, I think that that really, it really stands out whether I'm an undergrad or if I was competing with someone that was getting their masters and didn't have that experience. So I think that um, putting yourself out there is really what makes the difference. But is there anything the university could do to, to attract, to bring more attention to research and maybe thereby attract more people to, to look at the field because it is one of the fields even now with the recession um, that has a great number of opportunities and unlike a lot of other um, industries. In fact, yeah, obviously a lot of graduates you know, from college now are having trouble finding jobs. That's not necessarily true in the, in the research field. So, Rebecca, uh, Camila, is there anything that jumps out at you that could be done perhaps a little differently? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I know at Aurora University we have the um, barking research class, um, but I feel as though there should be more classes offered and even um, maybe more professors talking about it. If you have professors talking about it, that gets uh, students attracted to it. And when you have those classes offered, uh, more students are going to take them. And I think uh, I think it's an interesting field. So um, maybe the education on what the field actually is and how many opportunities you actually do have um, will help the students learn that this could be a great field for them. To lack of knowledge. There's a lot of lack of knowledge as far as what you can do. I think that students are taking it for granted. I mean, at our school, marketing research is, some, is a required course. Oh, but really? even while you're in the class, I think that a lot of the students aren't really realizing that this is a huge field and that this is a huge opportunity that they could be reaching out and they're taking it for granted even while learning the material they just think it's it's just another class that they're taking and just not really taking advantage of it because I know especially Dr. Vandershee who's our faculty advisor he, he I mean he does a spiel every year at the beginning of class talking about joining the AMA chapter of our school and what difference it can make as far as networking and the people that you're meeting and I mean, there's only so much they can do besides the students taking initiative. Yeah. Coco Vib, spending five or six months of your time working on a project like this is obviously something that takes up um, a lot of commitment on your part. What is it about what you were doing in this project, maybe it was the project itself, that so captured you to want to put in that kind of time and effort? One of the main things that kept me going was the experience that I know it was going to give me. Um, I feel, I actually agree a lot with Rovesca when saying that a lot of students are not aware of what we need in order to be prepared to go into the workforce. Um, and learning from this experience that a lot of it is this, this experience. Um, so I know that, or I knew that during, during the process that this would be good for me in the end. And, uh, and on top of working with a creative team and a supportive advisor, that, uh, that, that was great. That's your Research Business Daily Report, sponsored by 4i, the insights and analytics transformation leader. There are a handful of 4i testimonials reachable via a link below this video. I suggest you check them out. Have a great research day and we'll see you tomorrow.